Yes, 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 yes. All right, please introduce yourself and what do you do? Hi, uh, my name is Kevin. I do music and audio, and I'm here with the rest of the audio team, and we're just kind of taking uh, requests from the other teams for what they want, audio-wise and music-wise. Um, I've been working mostly on sound effects today, um, but I have one song that I'm working on for an introduction sequence, um, and I'm hoping to sync that up with some voiceover. Uh, we've also been recording that in the other room, and that's been really fun just to see what the, um, the teams have been bringing to us, because it's a whole wide range of different projects that we're doing. Can, can you tell me a little bit about how the work system has been going? Because you're not like a traditional team where you have like a team of like five people working on the game. You are working on mini games. Exactly. So the audio tree is set up so that we can kind of do a variety of different tasks all at the same time. The teams will um, send us lists of audio um, sounds that they want and uh, like music cues and things like that. And we just kind of get to work breaking those down and you know getting more specific sounds from, from that. Um, the the part that I'm I've been kind of like I've been sort of the, the mother hen of the document, trying to make sure everyone checks off and signs off on what they've done, so we don't have anything being made twice or anything um, that people don't need being made because this is an iterative process. So we have a lot of stuff changing as we go. Um, typically when people come in and talk to me about what they want for audio, I, I ask them kind of what is their minimum viable product, what are they sort of aiming to get done by the end of the jam, and I sort of politely request that they only ask for audio for that as opposed to audio for the really big picture thing, which, you know, I've, I've done that too. When, I, when I'm in a team, I usually try to do too much <laughs> at game jams. Um, so it's, it's kind of a process of, of you know, targeting the most crucial moments in the game and providing audio for that encounter. Um, and yeah, um, another trick that I've been sort of like making use of is trying to make um, more generic sounds. And I know that sounds kind of strange or sort of, sort of bad, but it's really actually quite useful. You get a lot of utility from sounds when they're not tied to a specific um, encounter. For example, if you were to get sick, um, I could make a sound of someone coughing or sneezing or something. But then you could only use that sound for someone who sounds or looks kind of like me getting sick. And, and like if you had like a small kid getting sick, you wouldn't be able to use that sound anymore for that instance. So instead, I'd try to go for a kind of um, sort of more open, uh, more symbolic sound to signify that exact um, instance of getting sick. And now you can use it for anybody. Yeah, any other questions? <laughs> it kind of reminds me of like when they had to make sound effects for 8-bit games. Because they couldn't make the sneezing sound, so it was this weird right. like, sound. But then they could use it for like a person stopping and then you see the little dust cloud come up. Yeah, in, in those situations where you have such a limited palette of sounds, you know, everything is pretty symbolic. And one thing that's kind of cool is the way that game audio has sort of retained some of that. And, and pop culture at large kind of knows what you know, what does, um, you know, like, for example, the, the, the mushroom sound when you get a mushroom in, in um, Super Mario, like, that is synonymous with getting bigger, right? Like, that is just kind of a, a sound that everybody sort of recognizes, or most folks do. Um, yeah, and so even though we have, you know, hi-fi, you know, you name it, audio is available to us, we can create stuff and composite things. Um, that sort of more symbolic style is still really, really relevant, and uh, in, in situations like this, really useful. Um, nice. Um, what do you think about the theme of this game jam? Yeah, uh, the Social Justice Game Jam. I was super excited to see them announce it, and even happier that I could make it out and, and fit into my schedule, because it's, it's the kind of thing where, um, in this moment, uh, it's, it's really, important to be um, plugging in and staying tuned into kind of modern history, current events, and, and the movements of, of different groups to, you know, whether it's be recognized as people or, um, you know, have access to, to the rights or, or to, um, 
to justice in general. Like we need we need to have a sort of um, artistic side to to any any movement that is there to kind of support and empower people to make their their, their political voices heard. Um, and, and as far as you know, where, where do video games come into social justice? I think it's a kind of interesting um, combination, and, and maybe not one that, that you would think of right away. Like, um, but it's I don't know. For, for me, like I I consider video games such a, a passive thing normally. Like I'm kind of you know either with my friends or on my own, just kind of at home enjoying myself with a video game. Um, so when, when there's a game that asks me questions that I don't know the answers to right away or challenges my assumptions, um, that usually catches me off guard and that makes me think. And that's, that's I guess, an example of, of sort of a way of, of um, building empathy, I think, is something that games can do really well, um, especially the ones that place you in the shoes of, of someone not like you, or ask you to do something that you won't get to do in your everyday life. Um, yeah, that's a way that games let us kind of explore those different possibilities, and that to me is 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 something that's really powerful. And I think that you know, games let let us do that. So, I kind of talk myself into a circle there. <laughs> no, it's good. It's really good. I mean, it. I mean, it sounds like video games as an entertainment media can evolve and become more, especially if they challenge you, you know, to think differently or to explore new ideas that you're not used to. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think about this game jam compared to some of the other game jams? Like, what makes this one unique? Um, so my impression of Social Justice Game Jam right now is, is that it's been very um, intimate. I think there's been some good conversations um, just from the, the sort of teams that I've seen designing their games, they, um, they seem to be doing a good job of um, really thinking through the issues that they want to explore in their game. Um, because it is, right at the outset, um, focused on, on kind of creating awareness and beyond that, creating empathy. Um, or, or just uh, providing more information about legal circumstances and things like that. So with that, with that kind of like goal, your your game suddenly has to have, um, well, has to be accurate if you're going to do a game about the law. <laughs> you need to have, you know, you can talk to the the lawyers in hand that they've had here. That that's a new thing. I haven't seen that before in a game jam. Um, legal advice. <laughs> um, yeah. So so uh, yeah. On top of having legal advice at the game jam, um, it's also been kind of small compared to some other ones. So it's it's been nice getting to talk to people and getting to know them. And then also being in this really awesome space, the Living Computer Museum has been really, really nice and just cozy for us to settle into. Nice. Do you have anything else to add that, you know, novel experiences with any of the teams or just any other thoughts about the game jam? Um, let's see. I'd like to say that game jams are still something that I believe everyone can participate in and benefit from, um, especially newcomers. I think it's a really, special environment and it's very welcoming and um, it's a really great place to learn about the different skills that are required to make a game um, and not having those skills when you walk in the door isn't necessarily a barrier to entry when i got started doing game jams which was maybe a year ago um, you know, I, I wasn't very confident at all and it's just been a process of working with people who have different skills than mine and kind of putting those puzzle pieces together to make you know some crazy little idea start to work, um, and that process is just so rewarding. I think it's something that, that um, anyone who is interested in it really should give it a shot. Awesome! Thank you very much, Kevin. Thanks, guys. <laughs>